Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming out. Um, my name is Malcolm Neal. I'm a junior at West High School. And um, through my time living in Columbus, which I was born in, um, I have experienced both the community and the schooling system, which I go to. Uh, for starters, I'll explain my home life. I live in a small house that I share with my mom, my sister, my brother, and three dogs. The lack of space can be stressful at times, but we've learned to overcome that and get along with each other. The interior of the house is rather stress-free, but the exterior is a different story. Throughout the night and day, we can hear trains rolling by, arguing neighbors, gunshots, and sometimes even fireworks going off. Throughout, oh, sorry, me and my family have learned to overcome these loud noises and get on with the more important things, such as getting our homework done with me and my sister going to school, and my mom cleaning the house, and us just getting a good night's rest. Uh, my neighborhood is not the most aesthetically pleasing either, but it's gotten a lot better throughout the years with community projects such as building fences in the park down the street from my house and planting trees around our neighborhood. I have not always been attending Columbus City Schools, but I've been here long enough to see all of the opportunities that it gives the students. Um, I'll give you an idea of what, I, what kind of student I am. I am a straight A student with a mature attitude and <laughs> thank you. Um, uh, I'm self-motivated and maintain a steady job along with my good grades. Um, the amount of opportunities I'm given is kind of crazy. I'm enrolled in Columbus State Community, Co Community College, sorry, and on and off campus, and I plan an early enrollment next year into Ohio State or Otterbein University. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, I plan on being a trauma surgeon, which through all these opportunities that I'm given at Columbus State and Columbus City Schools, I will definitely be able to achieve. I know it'll be a big challenge, but I'm willing to accept it and work through it. With the, all the opportunities I'm given through Columbus City Schools and the people around me, I'm sure to achieve all the goals I have. And tonight, I, it's my pleasure to introduce one of those people that will be there with me, Mayor Ginther. I've been informed that among Mayor Ginther's main priorities is neighborhoods and schooling systems. And that makes me and my friends very happy to know that we have a mayor that thinks of us and our neighborhoods as his main priority. And thank you, Mayor Ginther, for all that you do. Without further ado, here he is. Good afternoon, what a great day in the city of Columbus and to be here uh, on the west side. Huffman tells me it's the best side uh, here in Hilltop, USA. And uh, I don't know about you, but I just met, and I'm just gonna start calling him Dr. Neal. How about that? <laughs> Dr. Neal, uh, what an amazing uh, young man. His father is here. Dad, will you stand up and be recognized as well? Strong, stable families make for great neighborhoods, and great neighborhoods make for exceptional cities. And so uh, we're grateful for the Neal family and all that they're doing in our great city and in our schools. So just a couple of quick thank yous to our department directors, particularly Director Joe Lombardi and his team, uh, all of their work on today's budget. City Council President uh, Zach Klein, President Pro Tem Priscilla Tyson, who also chairs is the finance, uh, the finance committee for City Council. Thank you, President Pro Tem Tyson, for all of your help and support. I know Council Member uh, Mitch Brown is here. Thank you, Council Member Brown, who chairs Veterans Affairs uh, as well as Safety and probably several other committees. I'm forgetting, but thank you. Uh, and I wouldn't be here today without the great work and guidance of America's greatest auditor, Hugh Dorian, and our great uh, city attorney, Rick Pfeiffer. So grateful for all of their help. City Clerk, Lori Tyak. And how about the amazing Y staff that have continued to open up their house to us. Thank you uh, to all the great teammates here, 
uh, our partners uh, here on the hilltop and in great neighborhoods throughout our city. We had family reunions here. We've done family bike rides here. Uh, I was joking they're going to start making me pay rent as much as we uh, are partnering with him, but great to be here. So today I'm pleased to present my first budget as the mayor of Columbus. Our esteemed city auditor, Hugh Dorian, gave us his projections for revenue for the coming year. The future of the city looks bright, which makes it possible to focus on my top three priorities. As Dr. Neal mentioned, they're neighborhoods, neighborhoods, neighborhoods. This budget represents fulfillment of these strategic priorities while keeping our city financially sound. For neighborhoods, our goal is to engage and promote strong, distinct, and vibrant communities. And because neighborhoods are my top priority, I created the Department of Neighborhoods in partnership with Council this past year to carry out the development and revitalization of all neighborhoods within Columbus. The 2017 budget allocates $4.63 million toward this effort, including establishing an easy-to-access physical presence, renting offices at the Point of Pride Building in Linden. All of the divisions under the Department of Neighborhoods, with the exception of our five neighborhood pride centers that will remain across our community, will all be under one roof. Our thought and vision was if we have a one-stop shop for folks wanting to build and construct things in the city of Columbus, we ought to have a one-stop shop for folks on the front lines helping to improve their neighborhoods and, and active in civic associations and area commissions. Columbus Public Health has been allocated $31.6 million to continue to help improve the health of families, prepare for emergencies, and monitor community health. Continued programming to help make Columbus an active and vibrant community includes Get Active Columbus, Healthy Children, Healthy Weights, the Institute for Active Living, Farmers Markets and Community Gardens, and Bike and Walking Paths. This budget also includes funding to maintain full-time operating hours at our 29 community recreation centers, five athletic complexes, eight outdoor pools, 26 shelters, and over 8,000 acres of parkland. Director Collins keeps himself pretty busy. The city will continue to support social services by funding local agencies that serve residents with the greatest needs. The Community Shelter Board will receive new funding, $167,000 to assist pregnant women facing housing crises in their lives. We know how critical shelter is, particularly during pregnancy and the impact on prematurity and healthy birth outcomes. $125,000 for non-VA eligible veterans, men and women who have made sacrifices for this community and country that currently aren't being served with other uh, programs and services will be helped through this investment. $117,000 for proactive street outreach to the homeless, unsheltered individuals in our community. In addition, funding is included to continue to address infant mortality throughout Celebrate One, promoting and educating residents on infant safe sleep habits and providing safe sleep survival kits. In order to enhance safety in all Columbus neighborhoods, the 2017 budget allocates $576.9 million to support the Department of Public Safety. This is an almost $20 million, or 3.5% increase, over 2016. These funds will be used for new classes of police and fire to maintain the number of uniformed police officers and prepare for the opening of the new fire station on the far east side. Construction for the fire station on Wagner Road, the first new, not replacement, but new station that we have built since 2003 will begin toward the end of 2017 to better serve the residents and neighborhoods of the far east side of Columbus. 
The budget will retain funding for the Police Community Safety Initiative, which has been proven effective in helping improve neighborhood safety. Just in the last five years, the initiative has resulted in more than 2,000 felony arrests, the removal of more than 500 illegal crime guns from our streets, and the confiscation of illegal drugs with a street value totaling in the millions off of our streets. But as with all programs, this initiative will continue to evolve. In the coming months, we will enlist community input on how to best include more community-based policing and incorporate new strategies that focus efforts on drug activity, gang activity, and doing all that we can to work with neighborhood and community leaders to make sure our community remains safe. We are all aware of the opiate epidemic facing our nation. Columbus is not immune to that epidemic. According to the Franklin County Coroner's Office, one person in central Ohio dies every day from heroin overdose. Heroin addiction is not a disease of character. It is a disease of the brain. And it cuts across all of our neighborhoods, regardless of race, gender, or socioeconomic status. We all know that naloxone, Narcan, can save lives from overdoses and give those addicted to drugs the opportunity to seek treatment. In 2015, Narcan was used 2,200 times in Columbus. By October of 2016, we had already reached that same number. In 2016, Narcan was made available to police officers as part of a pilot in the South and West precincts. Police officers are often the first on the scene, even before EMS arrives. Seconds count in a heroin overdose. These police officers, these first responders, these law enforcement professionals administered Narcan 43 times and saved 42 lives. Our neighbors, our friends, our family members. And it is so important that we give our first responders the tools they need to help protect us. The 2017 budget includes $150,000 in funding to get Narcan into the hands of more police and other first responders to continue our fight in the heroin crisis. We continue to invest in products and initiatives that will work in de-escalation efforts. It has never been more dangerous in Columbus or in America to be a police officer. And police and community relations have never been more strained. And that's why de-escalation efforts, community policing, and doing all that we can to bridge the divide between law enforcement and the community will remain a top priority. We've allocated money for non-lethal weapons, tasers, for additional community mediation resources. One of my promises in my State of the City address was to put body-worn cameras on the street by the end of 2016. All the research shows body-worn cameras make it safer for folks on both sides of the camera. And that having and deploying body-worn cameras with the correct policies, procedures, and resources in place can make our whole neighborhood safer and stronger throughout our great city. Body-worn cameras are an important tool to enhance public safety and promote more positive interactions between the police and community. And after thoughtful and thorough research, our selection and the first phase of implementation will occur before the end of the year. The 2017 budget allocates funding for continued implementation, including personnel. Columbus has been in time of an unprecedented growth, due in large part to our fantastic economic development. 
This budget allows us to continue to promote opportunities for shared prosperity, building an economy that works for everybody through public investment that helps job growth as well as job training activities. We will continue relationships with Rev1 Ventures, NextGen, The Ohio State University, and other similar entities that will encourage entrepreneurship, innovation, and commercialization. With an allocation of $770,000, the newly created Land Redevelopment Division will seek to repurpose vacant, abandoned, and blighted residential and commercial structures in our neighborhoods and return them to productive community assets. In addition, the implementation of Smart Columbus, the U.S. Department of Transportation and Vulcan grant made to the city that we were awarded in June will provide economic development opportunities as more businesses come to Columbus to implement the work in our proposal. As everyone knows, the thrust and heart of that proposal was not simply about making it easier to get from point A to point B, but helping families and neighborhoods that have been left out of our success to get connected to job opportunities, affordable, high-quality child care, uh, workforce development, and also things that you and I might take for granted, access to fresh fruits and vegetables. It's about giving folks access to ladders of opportunity so that they and their families can build a brighter future. Early childhood development and education of our youngest residents is important to the future of this city. Three years ago, under Mayor Coleman's, Coleman's leadership, the city created the Department of Education to expand pre-K services in Columbus. The number of children served has doubled in the first three years of the department, from serving 366 children to 800 this year. We've seen the success and excitement with the opening of the Linden Park Neighborhood Early Childhood Education Center last month, one of the only education centers in America where the school district, the city, and other high-quality providers are working together, not just to serve and make sure that high quality pre-K is available to young people, but serving their entire families and helping to make sure they have the resources they need to build a brighter future. In the 2017 budget, we have allocated $4.7 million for early start opportunities with the goal of providing high quality pre-K to 1,000 students next year. On our way, we're on a journey. I have a vision for this city that every four-year-old will have access to high-quality pre-K. We're making progress. Well, we have a long way to go. In addition, we have budgeted $389,000 for after-school programs. As I have said continually, I believe the mayor's role is to be the partner in chief to the school district. Investing in early childhood, our work with Celebrate One to make sure we have better birth outcomes, access to high quality programming for our youngest citizens, make sure we're doing everything we can that they start kindergarten ready to learn, and then play a significant role in after school and in the summer. And the city remains uh, the largest sponsor of the summer meal program in the state of Ohio through the Recreation and Parks Department. Uh, we will continue that important work in the future. One of the first acts of my administration was to name a Chief Diversity Office. Our Chief Diversity Officer is Steve Francis, and we are now in the process of rebranding the Equal Business Opportunity Office to the Office of Diversity and Inclusion, with the mandate of ensuring that the City of Columbus employees reflect the rich diversity of our city. We can't become America's Opportunity City, unless we are willing to commit to the work of becoming America's Equal Opportunity City. The 2017 budget includes $1.5 million for efforts of bringing diversity, recruitment in city offices, and minority participation in contracts and services. Funds will also support a disparity study led by the Office of Diversity and Inclusion. 
and the Ohio Municipalities Business Conference that will be designed to bring together small minority and female-owned businesses with local municipalities from across the state of Ohio. My State of the City address in February, I announced the formation of the Columbus Women's Commission to advance the economic well-being of women in Columbus. In December, in December, the commission will be seated, and the 2017 budget includes funds to provide financial support of the administration of the commission. Their focus will be on pay equity, health, nutrition, housing, and safety, workforce development, and education. And as we look to the future to prepare this budget, we also took a hard look at city operations, what we could be doing more effectively and efficiently, what could be streamlined. And we are committed to continuing this work in 2017 with an independent operations review, the first of city government since the year 2000. We will continue this work in 2017 and reinvest our savings into critical city services and programs. There are many things going well in Columbus. And as this great recovery continues to reach more families and neighborhoods throughout our city, this is the time for us to be thoughtful and innovative and committed to reforms and efficiencies where we can deliver high quality services to the people of Columbus in the most cost effective way. Planning for the future and making sure we can protect those city services by being willing to change in ways that make sense. Part of the reason for our prosperity has been our commitment to fiscal responsibility, and that continues with the 2017 budget. With this proposal, we are able to put an additional $2.2 million into the Rainy Day Fund to keep the city on track of reaching our goal commitment we made to the voters back in 2009 of having a $75 million balance by the year end 2018. In addition, we will contribute $1.5 million into the basic city service fund to help offset any unexpected dips in revenue. These are very important for us to continue to protect our AAA bond rating. We're the only big city in America that has a AAA bond rating from all three rating agencies, which saves our taxpayers $25 million a year in interest alone by having that outstanding credit rating. I'm proud of this proposed budget. It's balanced and makes strategic investments in neighborhoods, public safety, and promoting diverse and inclusive community development while remaining fiscally responsible and positioning the city well to weather future economic downturns. The administration looks forward to working with Columbus City Council under the leadership of Finance Chair Tyson in the coming months to engage the public, seek input on community priorities, and to pass a budget that provides for the critical city services our residents rely on and which continues to invest in our neighborhoods. It's been said before that if you want to see a community's values and priorities, look at your budget. I believe this budget reflects our community's values and priorities. Neighborhoods, neighborhoods, neighborhoods. Safety and security for all of those that call Columbus home. We have a diverse and growing community, and one that will continue to remain on the move and leading the country if we're willing to take care of one another, invest in one another, and grow together into even brighter days in our future. Thank you all for being here today. Thanks for all of your work, and look forward to working with you in the months and years ahead to make sure we realize our place throughout uh, this great country as America's opportunity city. Thanks for being here.